Next in line, the X109 connector. Uh, this is kind of all your, I guess you'd say, low voltage signals uh, that come from the PCM and TCM and engine that need to make their way back to the rest of the car at large. Really your only connections between this PCM harness and the truck is this X2 harness, which is all big power kind of stuff, power and control, relay control, and then the X109. Uh, I've got excerpts from the manual here. Um, I like to make copies of it so I don't tear up my manual. I make lots of notes on it. Uh, and then you can see the, uh, all the definitions that are in that connector, wire colors and sizes, circuit numbers, which can help you um, help you trace things down and then uh, all of the all of the functions. Um, it's interesting that the one thing I first pulled out was these six wires here. Uh, it's basically a low reference which is just a, a signal ground, uh, a 5 volt reference and the uh, APP which is the accelerator pedal position sensor. There's six wires here. There's two 5 volt references, two low references, and then two signals. The, uh, the accelerator pedal position sensor has got two completely discrete um, or separated sensors in it. So if one goes bad, uh, it'll shut down the party because uh, they want that to be very safe. So we've, we can immediately see that these are the APP signal one and two. Uh, and so this is, on those six wires, that's where the accelerator pedal position sensor gets into the PCM harness because that accelerator pedal is inside the truck. It goes through a couple sub harnesses before coming into here. So after you mark those, you can kind of pull those out of the harness and those will get just spliced directly or maybe through another connector depending on uh, how you need to get it through your firewall, etc. to that accelerator pedal switch. Uh, but I've just worked, I've worked this connector and labeled everything and uh, what I've come up with on here uh, we've got, uh, there's the accelerator pedal position low reference for one of the sensors. There's the, the sensor 2 signal. Um, there's the 5 volt for one of the signals. Um, there's the sensor 1 for the uh, accelerator pedal position. Uh, 5 volt and the low reference. So there's your six wires right there in a row even. How amazing is that? So this is all accelerator pedal position sensor. You can kind of, you know, we could zip tie that together and get it out of the way if you wanted. Uh, here we've got a wire that they call VSS. I'm not sure if that's a vehicle speed sensor or if it is a uh, just a uh, um, a vehicle speed uh, like to the cruise or something like that. Uh, I've got a couple more in here in the middle. They're hard to show while holding. <coughs> Coolant level switch. Um, I guess that just goes directly to the dash and not into a serial type interface. Uh, we've got a ground. Sometimes they like to put a ground that's continuous between the uh, inside of the car, let's say the uh, uh, instrument panel or something like that, directly to an engine ground. Um, of course there's grounds all over the truck, but they want one that's contiguous with the engine. Uh, we have an AC low pressure switch that comes through here probably goes to an HVAC module and then we've got um, one here let's see this one is uh, yes accessory wake up serial um, it's part of the GM low speed LAN I believe uh, and then we've got uh, the GM LAN high speed interface. This is, you can see it's twisted here. This is the GM high speed LAN. This is a connection between uh, the glow plug module, which is, I believe, at the end of the line. So it would be glow plug module, which has a terminator in it, and then it would go to the, the TCM, and then pass to the TCM to the PCM, and then it comes into the car on this right, right here. If you're going to be using something like a body control module, or any of the other serial modules, uh, you're going to need to connect this to, to something else. Um, and indeed, you may you may want to terminate this to the uh, um, the DLC connector under your dash so that you could access things with the Tech 2. I believe the Tech 2 talks over this high-speed LAN. 
Um, then we've also got uh, here the uh, malfunction indicator light, the MIL. Uh, this wire uh, is a pull to ground that will turn on the malfunction indicator light. Um, and uh, looks like I have no idea what this gray wire is yet, or this blue wire. Further hunting is needed. And then this is the weight to start lamp control. Once again, a pull down to ground. So if you were to hook 12 volts up to a light bulb and then hook the light bulb to this, this would pull uh, down to ground during weight to start. Uh, I think it's nice that the weight to start and the malfunction indicator lights are um, are still a hardwired kind of a simple dash kind of setup instead of the uh, you know the, the complicated uh, serial dash uh, you know that's almost impossible to interface with anything else. So there you have it. That's the full LMM engine wiring harness. As far as what you can take out, um, I don't think I will be using much, if anything, out of this X300 connector. I don't need to take it off, though. I'll just unplug the connector and not use it. Uh, of course, you need all the, the, these grounds and the starter control. Uh, if you're doing some kind of conversion where you don't have the Duramax front end with the, with the electronic um, switching in the front end, uh, you can remove this front differential connector. Uh, of course, you'll be cutting and taking wires out of these to suit your, your needs. Of course, those have to stay. That's the party right there, the X107-108. Uh, if you don't have air conditioning at all, you can completely remove the AC, compressors, uh, AC compressor connection and the trinary switch. Well, I guess it's a digital uh, AC switch. I'll be taking this out for the simple fact that my AC is going to be controlled uh, using the donor vehicle's AC controls and not the digital AC controls that come with the Duramax. But I will leave this in because the connector is correct for the Duramax uh, compressor and uh, it's nicely bundled in the harness. So I'll just be able to uh, get it onto a relay and control it somewhere else. Leaving, you got to leave the uh, alternator control. This alternator is controlled digitally from the PCM from charging. It's not like an older alternator where it's just one wire and it you know, tries to output 13 and a half volts to keep the charge. This is actually controlled by the PCM. Um, alternator, main, main alternator wire. I'll be taking it out because I'm going to be taking and changing this section of the harness, but of course it does still need to be connected through the maxi fuse or some other kind of fused protection method, maybe a fusible link to the, to the battery system of the donor vehicle. You have to have the, the blade MAF. Um, I am taking out the intake heater uh, as part of my complete DPF delete. Uh, I can also take out that, that lone EGT sensor that's on this main harness. Uh, I will be taking out the low coolant switch because I'll let the low coolant warning uh, all be handled by my donor vehicle. Same thing with this AC low pressure switch. That will be a, all controlled by the donor vehicle HVAC. And then uh, I will be using this relay, or excuse me, this fuse module just because it's kind of nice and it's got appropriately sized fuses. But, uh, you know, of course, this intake heater grid one will come out and this will be repackaged, repackaged differently. I will not be using this lead that goes to the UBEC because I'm not going to be using the large GM uh, fuse block. Uh, we'll just make our own relays to control all the functions we need turn on and off these pink wires and whatnot, so good luck.